let's talk about our first reaction type, which are combustion reactions. Those are also called burning reactions or complete oxidation reactions. And our first example is going to be the combustion of propane, which we see in its structural formula, CH3, CH2, CH3. We're going to gang up all of the uh, carbons and hydrogens into an empirical or molecular formula. This one's both. And a combustion reaction is going to take whatever is being uh, combusted or going through combustion plus oxygen. And the products are going to be carbon dioxide and H2O. And the carbon dioxide, or sorry, the H2O will be gas because this type of reaction typically gives off heat as well, and that heat will be used to get the H2O into the gas phase. So we'll put our propane here. That's a C3. My three's sort of disappearing. And now, so that's a combustion reaction. So whenever I tell you combustion of something with a formula, you put it on this line, you write the other reactant as oxygen, and the products are carbon dioxide and H2O. Sometimes there's a third one, but I have to tell you what that is. Now let's go through our guidelines for balancing a chemical reaction. The first thing you do is you put lines in front of each formula, and I'm gonna do that in red. And this is where the coefficients will go. You are finished balancing the reaction where there is, when there is a number on each line. And I'm showing you my process. Your process doesn't have to be like this. Just make sure that your process gets you the right answer. So uh, now let's go to uh, green. And it says put a one coefficient in front of the most complex for looking formula, most different elements, and the most at different atoms, or the most atoms. So we have two elements here. Same thing on the product side. However, C3H8 has the most atoms, and in combustion reactions, almost always the thing that's going through combustion is the most complex. Well, as soon as I have this one in front of this, that means I actually have three carbons and eight hydrogens. And uh, now we'll continue. Rule guideline number three says balance all the elements in the most complex formula unless it's a one element only formula. And that should be uh, some quotes there. One element formula like oxygen. But since there's no oxygen in this first one, we don't have to worry about it anyway. Typically, if you balance left to right, that's the best way to do. Here's C3. I have three carbons. That means there must be three carbons on the product side, according to the law of conservation of mass, and also to make sure that it's balanced. That means I must have a three here, and that gives me three carbons, and it also gives me six oxygens. Six, because it's three in the front, means there's three carbon dioxides, and since each carbon dioxide has two oxygens, three times two is six. So I have six oxygens. Now I'm going to balance my hydrogens. I have eight hydrogens on the reactant side. I need eight hydrogens on the product side. Hydrogens come two at a time. I'm going to put a four here, and that gives me eight hydrogens. And it also gives me four oxygens. Four times the one oxygen in this formula. So now I have 10 oxygens on the product side. I will now balance my one element formula last. And uh, if I, whatever number I put here, I'm just gonna balance these. And because it's a one element formula, it doesn't mess any, any other elements up. So I have 10, I need 10 oxygens here. Oxygens come two at a time. Therefore, I'm gonna put a five here. And I always like to double check that five times two is 10, and everything is balanced here. That is the balanced chemical reaction for the combustion of propane. And if you look down here, rule number five, or guideline number five, if needed, clear fractions. 
by multiplying by a number to get whole numbers. We'll work on that in the next example. Which is called combustion of ethane, CH3, CH3, which we will abbreviate in its molecular formula, C2H6. And combustion means C2H6 is our first reactant plus oxygen gas reacts to produce carbon dioxide plus H2O gas. And I'm balancing this, so I'm going to put my coefficient lines straight away in front. And now I'm going to, I have my rules right here next to me, put lines in front of, we did that, put a one coefficient in front of the most complex looking thing. There's my one. Now, again, I only have two carbons here and six hydrogens. I can't put anything over here because I don't have them yet. Next, it will be two here for two carbons. That gives me four oxygens as well. Let's see, oh, six hydrogens means I have to have a three here for six hydrogens because three times two is six. And now I get three oxygens. And now I need seven oxygens total. Oxygens come here and I'll write my seven oxygens here. And then I'll put up here a number that gives me, when I times it by two, gives me seven. That number happens to be 3.5 because 3.5 times two is seven. You could also use seven halves there because that's three and a half, 3.5 as well. Whichever one works for you and there is a dot in there. And this is balanced, but it is not the answer. The answer requires that we take everything and uh, according to the last page, multiply all the coefficients by two. So coefficients. Multiply times two the coefficients. And it's two because this is a half number. On rare occasions, it won't be a two. You'll get 3.333 here, let's say, and you have to multiply times three. So final answer is going to be two C2H6 plus seven oxygens plus uh, goes to produce four CO2s and six H2Os. And that is what I will be looking for for the balanced chemical reaction if you get ethane. Now, uh, this one's gonna be similar except that uh, now our formula has a third element in it. It's still three carbons. It's still eight oxygens, but now it has an, oh sorry, eight hydrogens, and now it has an oxygen in it. And, but the process is the same. C3H8O plus oxygen gas goes to carbon dioxide plus H2O spacing it out so at least for my technique I have some space to put in lines for the ba the coefficients for the balanced reaction and I'll just note here so in all chemical reactions you'll be uh, given or allowed to figure out the formulas for the products and then those formulas don't change and we'll talk more about that but for now um, I, this is my most complex. It has the most types of elements in it. It has three elements, plus it has the most atoms. And I go through my process again. Three carbons, eight hydrogens. This time I have one oxygen. And, but I don't have any oxygens here yet in my method because I don't have a number there. So now I'll put my three carbons. And I have to balance these carbons with these. They're the, they only appear one time on each side. So this is a three again. I have a four again here. That's three carbons and six oxygens, eight hydrogens, and 
four oxygens. And now what's different about this is I have 10 oxygens, but I already have one oxygen here, so I only need nine. And nine, basically nine divided by two is how you get this number. It's gonna be nine divided by two, which is 4.5 or nine halves, either way works. And now I have a fraction. And just like uh, the example up here, uh, I want you to write your final answer box it off and I will allow you to do that. We're going to continue with the next example, combustion of nitrobenzene. This one has an additional uh, product, uh, NO2, because it has an additional element in here. And I've already given you the, the molecular formula for this. C6H5NO2 plus, and I'll put my lines in as I go, Still only one other reactant, oxygen, goes to CO2 plus H2O plus NO2. And depending upon how a combustion goes, you can get different nitrogen-containing products here. I've got my lines, four elements. This is clearly my most complex. And this time I have six carbons, five hydrogens, one nitrogen, and two oxygens. And remember we balance all the elements in this formula first, although we'll still do oxygen last, and oxygen's last in this formula anyway. So six carbons, I need to have six carbons here. Gives me 12 oxygens big number. Then I have uh, five hydrogens. Hydrogens come two at a time. So instead of, if I want five hydrogens, I have to actually put five halves here or 2.5. That gives me five hydrogens. And uh-oh, five halves oxygen. Wow. I don't like the looks of that. But we'll keep going. Um, for our one nitrogen, I need one nitrogen on the other side, and I get two oxygens. So I'm going to have to practically get out a calculator here. Yep, I got it. Well, let's see. So this is going to be uh, 12 plus 2.5. 12 plus 2.5 plus 2. That's 16.5 oxygens. I have two oxygens here, which means I need 14.5 oxygens. And oxygens come two at a time. So 14.5 divided by two, 7.25. balances it, and that's not our final answer, but that balances it, because now the last step is to clear fractions, and since I have a 0.25 number there, that's a quarter, I have to multiply everything times four, and my final answer this time will be four nitrobenzenes, four moles of nitrobenzene plus 7.25 times 4 is 29. Ouch. But it's right. This I can do. 6 times 4 is 24. No, I better do this one. 2.5 times 4. I get 10. and times four, four and O2. And I like to just double check. Let's see, so my nitrogens, I got four over here, four over here, 20 hydrogens, 20 hydrogens. That looks like it's good. And that's about the biggest numbers you're gonna see, although you will see some that are pretty close on the homework.
Now, let's do G. What's interesting about G is that they're all ionic compounds and they have already, and they've already got the lines in front of them. So there's one hint for this one or note. The hint for this one is, so balance polyatomic ions to get as one thing. And I should have written this note a little lower. I apologize, but I think we'll still make it work. So together, so as one thing. And you can still totally do the method up here, but sometimes it's easier if you look at this and you say, I have uh, three nitrates right here, three NO3 minuses, and I still see my NO3 on the other side. I have carbonates over here, CO3, and I have carbonates right there. And this, you'll see, we're gonna talk a lot about this kind of reaction. So you will have some of these to balance. And this one, it looks like I have the most here, so I'm going to call this my most complex. And I'm going to do that I have one aluminum and I have three nitrates. And I've got the charge there because it is a nitrate. It helps me keep track of things. Um, and I know actually that I have an aluminum three plus there. You don't have to use the charges, but they can help. Now, oh shoot, on my other side, I've got a two. Maybe this was a better choice. It does have more ions. I think I made a wrong choice, so I'm gonna just scratch that. And I'm gonna put my one here. I don't have those anymore because I don't have a number here. Now I have two aluminum three pluses over here and three carbonates. So if you run, so, and hopefully this will get rid of my fractions. We'll see. Mm, I don't know. But now, since I have two aluminum, and you can start anywhere. Notice I'm starting with a product here. So two aluminum ions. Now this number becomes a two. And I have two Al3 pluses. And two times three, that's six nitrates. Uh, minus, that's just minus one. Now, uh, oh, I balanced my aluminums here. Now let's balance our carbonates. I can see that I've got three carbonates. Carbonate only appears here. I need a three here. So that gives me Two times three, that gives me six NAs or Na pluses and three carbonates. My carbonates are balanced. And now I have not balanced my sodiums and I have not balanced my nitrates. You can choose either one and if you've done it correctly, they will both work. So let's say six, since this is a smaller thing, let's do six sodiums. That means I have to have a six here. And lo and behold, for these types of reactions, which we will see, that I now have also six nitrates. And without even trying to balance the nitrates, we've got these done.